Hello my lovelies and welcome to my channel. Today, Malicious Compliance. Our story, Toxic Oven, posted by user Small Angry Dodge. Please sit back, relax and enjoy. Okay, so a bit of context. This took place when an old man who I will call Doug that I lived with got married. He and I live on a ranch taking care of cattle. Doug's son also moved in with us shortly after with his girlfriend. When Doug met this woman, she refused to even sleep under the same roof with him until they were married because she claimed she was very religious. She also very recently divorced her husband when they met. A couple months go by and after showing up from school, I was still in high school, I find a woman in the house unpacking her things. This woman I will call Bessie. I call the old man about Bessie where he tells me that they just got married and she will be living with us now. At first I was shocked, but I'm very adaptive and soon fell into a new routine. At first Bessie was fine, but it soon became obvious that she was not who she claimed to be. She claimed to be a cowgirl and rode horses, but after she moved in confessed that she hadn't ridden a horse in over 20 years and gave every excuse in order not to ride. She also hated any family other than her own. I remember when my dad was going to visit for the first time in a while, and we informed her. She spoke with my folks over the phone, and she pretended to be very friendly with them, even asked if they could help her move in some things that she recently bought. She then left the ranch unannounced to go and see her family, supposedly, the day before mine was supposed to show up. She didn't return until a couple of weeks later when my family and Doug's son left, leaving us alone. She was constantly very aggressive when it came to cleaning. This will be important later. Also, when she would cook, if she would make a mistake, especially with desserts, she would leave me those plates and serve the best for herself. For example, she would intentionally burn cookies and leave those for me to eat, while the others would be on separate plates wrapped for her and Doug. She also made a batch of fudge once, and when I walked in to take a peek, she snarled at me, saying I was to have none. I just smiled, said OK, and walked away. An hour later, she gives me a whole plate, saying she was just joking, and she hopes I enjoyed the fudge. I took one bite to know that the only reason she gave me this batch was because the sugar didn't cook, and it was as if you were chewing on sand. Now, on to the story. On this particular day, I awake to find Bessie to have made breakfast all for herself, leaving Doug, his son, his girlfriend, and me to fend for ourselves. This was a regular thing. I get started chopping potatoes and cooking eggs, offering to everyone else if they wanted some. We have a very old-fashioned electric stove that is white and constantly got burned, leaving dark black residue on the burners that were very visible. I made breakfast for everyone and turned off the stove to let it cool off. Electric stoves, or at least this one, takes quite a while to cool off. Bessie made it a rule to scrub the black residue off this stove after every use. I gathered my things and go to sit down to eat my breakfast. This is where an all too familiar Karen tone snaps at me. What are you doing? I calmly reply. I'm sitting down to eat my breakfast while the stove cools. She didn't have to tell me for me to know what she wanted. No, you need to clean it now. Bessie practically screamed. No one said a word to her and just looked at me to see what my next move was. I calmly looked her in the eyes and asked her, So, you want me to clean off the stove while it's still burning hot? She just stared at me with daggers and yelled, Yes! Cue malicious compliance. I gave her my best poop-eating grin and just told her, Okay. Leaving my food where it was, I got what we cleaned the stove with, Ajax, water, and a steel wool scrubber, and went to work. She watched me as I sprinkled the Ajax on the stove, which did nothing at first, but the second I poured water on it, all hell broke loose. I grabbed a rag and held it over my mouth, and had to hold my breath from the vile gas that rose from the stove. It was so thick and white that it instantly filled the room with what I assume was a toxic gas and gave everyone a coughing fit. But I was determined. I went to scrubbing the stove, alternating between hands and wrapping the steel wool with paper towels to keep it from burning my hands. One by one, Doug, his son and his girlfriend slowly left the room with their food. 
but Bessie just looked down at the table and continued eating, only looking up at me every couple of seconds to make sure I didn't stop. She didn't say a word as I continued to clean the stove. We were in the kitchen as I continued to make this toxic gas on the stove. After about five to ten minutes of scrubbing, I got it close to her standards and wiped off the stove. The gas still lingered in the air as I smiled at her, grabbed my plate and walked through the front door to eat outside. She never left the kitchen and she sat there in what I assumed was defeat from my malicious compliance. I still smile at the thought of it. Our second malicious compliance, posted by UserCarefulPeace5258. Scream at me to do my job. Okie dokie. Please enjoy. I am an assistant manager who works in the medical field. We have a patient that requires referrals to get treatment with us for some permanent injuries that require ongoing care for pain management. The doctor's office that manages his case is really bad about communicating with us. I often had to call upwards of four times, starting several times weeks ahead of time, to make sure that his next referral would be in place and ready to go, so he had no gaps in his treatment. I have been doing this for him over two years now. A few weeks ago he comes in already in a foul mood. The person that is doing his treatment comes in the door at right on time, sets his stuff down and gets him started, at about a minute and a half after the start time of his appointment. When the appointment finishes, from my seat at the front desk, I can hear him from all the way in the back of our office, about a hundred yards away, yelling at her for being late and her shorting him on treatment time. This was untrue. She had actually given him just short of an extra five minutes since she didn't have another person right after him. So I went back to try to calm him down. He screamed at both of us for about ten minutes and then he started to get in my face. At that point, we both just start walking away from him, her to the back and me to the front, and he follows me screaming at me about how I need to do my job and make sure his referrals are ready to go and I am just not engaging anymore. He finally leaves. This was the third incident like this. So a few weeks go by and he continues to come in. He never apologised to either of us for his behaviour. Today I got to inform him that he is out of visits and there is no new referral in place. He asks what the issue is and I calmly tell him that I have simply been doing my job, which is to receive the referral, schedule the treatment and inform the referring office after the final visit has been used. It is not my job to stay on top of his doctor's office and make sure they do their job. I let him know since he was so insistent about it that this is what I will be doing from now on. If he had issues with how his doctor's office was managing his referrals, he would need to speak to them about it. He left without saying anything. Well, friends, I certainly hope that you enjoyed today's malicious compliance stories. I was going to add a third, but the mods decided to remove it. So, just the two. Story 1. Bessie needs to get over it herself. At least she chose some shame and remained in the toxic environment while OP cleaned. She hopefully won't do that to OP again. Definitely a great way to prove your point, OP. Story 2. It certainly pays to not yell at people to do their job when they have gone above and beyond for you continuously. Well done, OP. Yes, you did your job. Please let me know what you think in the comments below. Until next time, so long, farewell, pip pip, cheerio. Much love and bye.